lesson here. You know, I just I just want to share just how much I appreciate having Colton back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, we were texting all week, you know, and it was like I could just feel his whatever. <laughs> I mean, sometimes he was up, he's like, I'm feeling a little bit better, and other times he's like, I'm just out. Yeah. <laughs> and he come back on a couple of hours later, you know, I get another text from Colton, you know, I'm like, so I just want to say, bro, I hold you up, man. I know uh, how much you love this ministry and all the hard work you've been pouring into all of us. I just see God really blessing it. And I remember texting him just saying, you know, something great, greater is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Satan's trying to take you out now, but it's good to have you back with all your strength. And then Mandy, amen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mandy is, you know, she's such a quiet woman, you know what I mean? And uh, the gentle spirit, but very powerful. And uh, sister, I just want to hold you up as, as our women's ministry leader. I think you really showed who you are yeah. and what you stand for uh, when the times when you know your husband was out, you're like, nothing is going to stop this ministry from being great. Mm -hmm. And you led the way, I think, for all of us. Uh, you take away any excuse that any of us can have. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, amen. I want to hold both of you guys up before I get into the <laughs> I'm going to talk about something that's very good in my heart, and uh, the title of our, of our study this morning, this afternoon, shall I say, it's not more preaching, but more teaching. Uh, it's the anatomy of a study. The anatomy of a study. Now, I love to study the Bible with people. You probably figured it out by now. <laughs> And the reason why is because when I study the Bible with people, I get to share with them my love for God. Write that down. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> the reason why you study the Bible with people is because you want to show them the love of God. While you're showing them the love of God, what should be coming out, first and foremost, is your love for God. Does that make sense, church? Yeah. That's what has got to come out first and foremost. All right. So, of course, the goal of a study, let's look at this. I never get tired of talking about fruit. Look at John <laughs> chapter 15. Because that's the goal. So you got to know why are you studying the Bible, people? You're not just showing up and spending an hour yeah. or two hours. Come on. You know what I'm saying here? Yeah. The goal is to get them baptized. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Amen? That's the goal. You know what I mean? It's like you go to work, you want to get paid, right? Amen. Right. Yeah. 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 Right, you know? So the same thing. Study the Bible people. The goal is to get them baptized. So let's read here in John 15, one of my favorite verses. The Bible says, Jesus says here, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear what? Fruit. Fruit, Fruit that will last. Okay. The fruit that's going to rise is the fruit that, number one, understand that they are doing it because they love God, and also that you love them. Does that make sense here, church? All right. Now, the first thing is you have to know the heart that you're dealing with. Look in John chapter 4. I love this. You've got to read the whole chapter here. I don't have enough time. But I love the way that Jesus dealt with the Samaritan woman. I think a lot of us in our study of the Bible with people, I think one of the mistakes that I see is we've got to make sure that we're asking probing questions. Hmm. See, I love what Jesus did. See, Jesus started out, I call it the soft probe. He started out with a very simple question. Will you give me a drink? Pretty easy question, right? Yeah. But see, that's the opening. You know, we have a, a lot of you, we go out sharing, I appreciate everyone coming out. You know, you know, we talk about, you know, how how would you how do you, do you believe that you're a spiritually minded person? And it kind of gets people to thinking a little bit. Are you a spiritually minded person? We're out sharing with people. And it kind of opens the door. If they're spiritual and religious, they'll say that. If they're not religious at all, or they believe in Muhammad, or they believe in whatever, they'll share that. So Jesus just asked a very question, will you give me a drink? It's important that we, 
when we're talking to people, get to know their hearts. Then he goes on, as he keeps talking to the Samaritan woman, he kind of leads on, he, and he, he gets to what I call the probing question. Go, call your husband, and come back. And of course, we know that the man that she's living with what, wasn't her husband, right? See, at the end, you gotta, don't be afraid to call people on their sin. But the only way you're gonna get there is if you have a relationship. I think John 4 is a good passage for you to study out uh, just to read how Jesus dealt with the Samaritan woman. I mean, I love the way he worked with her. He just talked with her. He shared with her scripture. He shared his heart. And at the end of it, not only equivalent to she get baptized, but she ended up bringing the whole town mm -hmm. to know Jesus. <laughs> Wouldn't it be phenomenal? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when you see someone get baptized and they end up bringing the whole town. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You know, guys, I hold up Preston, you know, he's an awesome example. Yeah. Come on, you know, right. Preston, you know, we, we, the word of God was sharing with Preston and Jim Real and us, many more that we got there praying, and well, then we just had to believe. <laughs> and then Preston went over and through a mutual friend, he met Mike. Then Mike first shared with Peter. Of course, then Mike and Peter shared with Jackie. And of course, they had the Bible talk on there, and Willow was coming. Oh, yeah. And Janelle. <laughs> you know, that's one person. Yeah. And you got the Samaritan woman, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a body man. And, uh, <laughs> he's not the Samaritan woman, he's a body man. <laughs> you know, but one man is now impacting so many. Yeah. Wow. Yep. See, you gotta understand how important having one yeah. Bible study is. Yeah. See, it always started with that initial sharing your faith and saying, hey, let's study the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I appreciate so many in the, in the fellowship. I just appreciate us getting people into the Bible. Yeah. See, the Bible, I, I love when I study the Bible people. I was telling this <coughs> to Willie, because he, he wants to win at 80, so. We're excited about that. All right. And we were talking to Count the Cost yesterday, and I said, you know, when you when you're going into a study, you got all the dynamite. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and for me, it's like, you know, I got I, I feel the pressure of the dynamite. Because you got all the dynamite that you need to blow someone up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost like a building that, you know, you, you gotta put the charge in strategically. See, you can't go in and just throw in the grenades and blow people up and they never come back. Yes. Of course, you know they're lost when they walk in the door, right? Right. You know they are. Come on, I'll be honest. Come on, it's a 10-minute conversation. Yes, it's a good question. They're going to get it wrong. You know they're lost. So automatically, you know, the dynamite starts jiggling in my pocket. You know? Shake the dust off your feet, 
When you leave that home or town, I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Mm. Now, why do I share that passage and why did Jesus say that? First of all, we've got to be praying that God will give us that worthy person. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. We're going to be praying, God, give us worthy people that we can share the gospel with. Now, when you're in there sharing with people, you can't be afraid. This is why I see some of us, even when I'm sharing, you'll spend 30 minutes on an unopened person. You just wasted God's good time. <laughs> Don't feel like you've got to share with them. You want to search for somebody whose heart's gone with you. Mm. Now, not all the time they're going to click on the first, first date. It's kind of like getting married, you know what I mean? You know, you know, you're not gonna fall in love the first time, but you gotta keep working at it. Keep working at it. I mean, I appreciate Mercedes, her and Joe. You know, what kept them going? Mm -hmm. The love. Yeah. yeah. You know, Mercedes. Oh, and you talk to Joe. She come around and tell me about. He talked to Joe. You know, she was trying to get people to bond with her. Come on and now. That's what matters, guys. It's the love and belief that you have in that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Question, have you decided that the person that you're studying with, if they're a worthy person, will become a disciple? Mm -hmm. You gotta let them know, hey, I'm determined that we're gonna be best friends. Seriously, I'm gonna have a problem telling people that. And all of my best friends love God. <laughs> they do. They do. All my best friends love God. <laughs> so if you want to be my best friend, you got to do what? You know about that? I'm not hanging out with you. You know what I mean? I want you to love God. Don't be afraid to tell people that. People respect that. Say, I just want to know, hey, I, I love hanging out with people. I want to spend time with you. But I want you to love God the way I love God. And see, the, the next thing you want to do is you get people to sharing about themselves. I think it's very important when we do studies with people, get them to share about themselves. You know, you are, you know, your mind going to be like a recorder. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember everything that they share with you. Mm -hmm. So when you're studying the Bible with them, you know how to appropriately study with them. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you're sharing your, you get them to share about their life. I have two phases that I share with them. First, I get them to share about their life. I want to know everything about them. I know, I want to know where they were born. I want to know how they grew up. I want to know a little bit about their parent life. I want to know about their brothers and sisters. I really want to know what do they value. You follow what I'm saying here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I share about my life. And I like, you know, it's kind of cool. You look at the Apostle Paul. How many times did he share the same story? Over and over again. But never got bored. People love to talk about themselves. <laughs> Come on, Grace. So get people to talk about themselves. Mm. Then you share about your life. Then, here's the trick. Then you got to go over to the spiritual side. Mm. You go, know, what are the major things or people that have influenced you spiritually? Then, that's when the skill starts to come in. Because see, after that, then you're going to know whether they're going to be on a religious track or a non-religious track. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference how you study the ball with a religious person mm -hmm. than a non-religious person. Mm -hmm. Okay, even the seeking God study. Because I, I went through that. But before we get there, I want to do one verse. Hebrews 4. Right. Right. See, you got to decide how you're going to operate. It's, it's been great with Mike, and I don't hold up Mike, because Mike's been the driving force down there at Mass America. Now here's what happened, here's what Mike and I do. After our initial study, we sit down and we get a game plan. We put together a game plan for everybody we're studying the Bible with. And I said, this is what we're going to do. And I say, this is a study that I'm going for. So I want him to know, because I already know in advance where I'm going with the study. Now, I've been experienced at studying the Bible people. 
culture and men. It's why you want to bring your studies to people who are more experienced. Mm -hmm. Because, no offense, they do this full time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they understand how to move a heart a lot quicker and more effective. That doesn't, doesn't mean anyone here can't do it. All of our goals, I'm just being honest with you, until you get to 50 people you baptize personally, you should bring your studies to someone who knows more. You should. So you get to 50, after 50, you kind of know what you're doing about it. What do you think? <laughs> All right. So when you get past 50, so don't be humble. I mean, don't be quiet. Excuse me. Bring your people. Bring your people. Bring your people to get help. Come on. Amen? Amen. Now, like I tell my guys, you bring it to me, you only two ways they're going to leave. <laughs> Sad and last. There's going to be no little crowd. They're either going to make it or they won't see them again. Right, Jim Riel? Right. <laughs> so I lost a few for Jim Riel. I'm like, I'm going. I told you what was going to happen. Sad and last. I can't make any excuses. Come on, bro. But see, you got to decide. <laughs> because you're the, you're the surgeon. Look at Hebrews 4 here. The Bible says here, for the word of God is what? Amen. I love that, don't you? Yeah. Sharper than any what? Yeah. Penetrates even. Now, this is intense here. This is how precise the word of God is. Wow. It penetrates even to deciding, dividing what? Soul, Soul and spirit. Joints and marrow, it judges what? Oh, See how precise the word of God is? Yeah. Now you see, if you buy an electric guitar and put it in my hands, you get some harder music. <laughs> you put that in sound hands, Whoa. oh, we all would just. <sighs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> Can't make it real though. Here's my point. You gotta learn how to be a master servant. Now, how confident would you feel if you go to a doctor and you gotta do this incredible invasive surgery? And you ask the doctor, how many times have you done this surgery? Uh, well, uh, this is my first one. I mean, how confident would you feel in getting on an operating table? Huh? Yikes. Okay. okay. All right. I'm going to convince all of y'all. Oh, yeah. A lot of us are butchering souls. Because we don't know our Bible. Okay, here's my advice to you. If you're going to do a study with someone, before you do the study, I want you to listen to Kip's tape. If you do the Seeking God study, I want you to listen to Kip's message before you do the Seeking God study. If you do the Word study, listen to that. If you do the Kingdom, listen to what? You need to hear what he's thinking in the mindset before you go into that study. I believe that everybody in this room by the end of the fall, she be able to do at least a minimum of four great studies. Mm -hmm. Seeking the Word, Kingdom, another one which some of us use, it's called Faith and Obedience. Now, I hesitate why I said discipleship, because some of you guys like to use discipleship early. I'm not a big fan of that, and here's the reason why. I believe when you do discipleship with someone, you're going for it. That means that you have cleared your schedule and you've cleared their schedule and you've decided after you do discipleship that you're going to study the Bible every day until they get baptized. That's what I do. I, all the rest of those studies are preliminary. Seeking the preliminary, the word, the kingdom, and whatever else that you might want to use. But after you do discipleship, because that, that, that means you let them know that they're lost. If you do a good discipleship study, they should walk out with, I'm not a disciple, I'm not a Christian, I'm not saved, I need to get right with God. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're a religious person, don't expect them to turn themselves in. A religious person is not going to turn themselves in on a discipleship study. But then that's why you got to know how to position your study with someone who is religious. Now, even in the uh, Seeking God study, write this down, if they're on the religious track, 
That means if you know they say, oh, I'm a Christian, I go to this church, and I go to this. I like to turn to Hebrews 3, 12 and 13. And I, get, I like to ask them, who is your spiritual mentor? Now, I've never had anybody give the right answer on that. The one answer you should want them to say, after you built a good relationship, and you've been a friend with them for a while, hopefully you want them to say you are. That's the sign of a good heart that's really ready to get disciple. That's that worthy person you're looking for. You want them to say, oh, I want you to be my spiritual mentor. Yeah. Now, it's important when you start a religious person that you got to be honest. It's no lolly gagging around when you start a religious If you're going to start a religious person, you got to know what you're doing. You follow what I'm saying here? Yeah. Look, if you don't know how to study the Bible with someone, don't study with a religious person. You got to bring them to someone who has a lot more skill in doing it. You're just you're messing their souls up. Okay? I love you, but that's the truth. Okay. All right? So, your job is to get in there and build a friendship, build a relationship, so that when you bring that person to someone who's more skillful, then you can see how to do it. It's not a slight on anybody in here. It's not about pride here. This is about completing a successful baptism. Amen? Yeah. All right. That's all we want to have here. Okay. So, I pick it back off of Hebrews 3, 12 and 13, with Hebrews 10, 23 to 25, talking to them about coming to church. That's another thing we got to do a lot of our studies. We are not getting as many of our studies out to church. That's yeah, right. So that means that we're not preaching Hebrews 10, 24 especially. Let us consider how we can spur one another on and let us not forsake meeting together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of us, I love you, you come in, you say you got studies, but I don't see them in church. That means that you're not calling them. First and foremost, you got to go, well, I'm just going to be honest with you. The people that I spiritually mentor, they go to church with me. Seriously. And you gotta establish that. If you don't establish that, you don't call people to that, they'll go to someone else's church. Is that what you want? Yeah. See, people will only meet your expectations. If you don't call them to a commitment, they're not gonna live it. So, when you're doing that, I like to go to see some guy study. I say, hey, I, I want to be your spiritual mentor, or, or Mike and I, we already talked about this. I said, Mike, this is your guy. You're going you're gonna to mentor this guy. I'll even say this study. I go, you know what? I'm going to be deep center field, but Mike's going to be your spiritual mentor. Now, what does that mean? From that point on, if I'm supporting Mike, everything pointed toward him, being the leader. Now, I might lead the study. I might help out, but he's a leader, right? Ruben knows. <laughs> and what am I doing? I'm giving support to Mike. Yeah, he's my guy. He's my guy I trust. I'm talking to him. No, I'm talking to Ruben every day too, but I'm talking to Mike. Every day. Okay, this is what you got to be doing. This is what you got to be thinking about. This is how you got to move. Okay, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? That's how you move a study. So a lot of us, what we do, we get in the bar, in the bar with people, and we get a little momentum, but we lose it. Because we don't practice daily relationships. Write that down. Hebrews 3, 12 and 13. Dailiness. 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 There should not be a study that you should not be involved with them every day. If you're not figuring out a way to get with them, whether it's a Bible study, whether it's a relationship time, whether it's a coffee time, whether it's, hey, you know what? We're going to have a prayer time. We're just going to call each other. We're having a prayer. I want you to be a part of the prayer. What are you establishing? Dailiness. When a person becomes a disciple, what do you, what do you want them to be? Daily. But if you haven't showed them how to be daily along the way, and then when you get to the count of the cost and they go, oh, we got to go every day? <laughs> what have you modeled? See, it should all be congruent. That means you should already have every day walking with them, talking with them, relational with them. See, it's all about building spiritual momentum to baptism. See, the first time I start out, I've been seeking God's study with someone. I might wait a couple of days, because I know not everybody's spiritually inclined at first. But if we start getting down the road, so I do a study called Faith and Obedience, when I get there, it's, it's, it's on. 
I'm calling them to be fully obedient to everything. When I tell people I study the Bible, people, I'm calling you to everything that I'm doing. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not a hypocrite. I am not going to hell by leading you astray. So I'm going to practice what I teach. So everything I'm teaching you, I'm already practicing and have practiced for many years. So that's important that you establish that. You have that what kind of relationship with them and that credibility. You want to call them the daily. Come on, friend. So Hebrews 3, 12 and 13, you start, you figure out. You have to tell them that. You just figure out in your mind how you're going to be in their life every day. It doesn't make sense you think about them every day at the beginning, but you're moving to that point. Yeah. You're building that momentum to baptism. Does that make sense here? Yeah. So understand that. All right. Now, it's important that we, and I just talked a little about this, I call that the rhythm of a study. It's doing it, you know, starting out maybe three, a couple of days, and then getting them out to midweek. Guys, we have such a powerful men's and women's ministry. That's here. right. Man, I appreciate Naomi. I mean, man, sister, that's awesome. But you can share about every sister in this room mm -hmm. in a personal and intimate way. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we need, guys. Now, when she learned how to do that with a study, she can blow us all the way back time. Yeah, that's right. Seriously, she understands. She understands the importance of relationship. And I hope that we receive that. Them guys are a little jealous because none of the guys got held up. Believe me. <laughs> I confess our sin, my guys. <laughs> 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 What's up with that? <laughs> Get 
camera in there. I got to get Colton or Sal. I mean, some of the older brothers, get them in there. Don't be afraid to help them to see some of the roadblocks. Mm -hmm. It's so funny, Mike and I were talking. Same thing I just said. I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, though. Because what? He's being trained. Yeah. Come on. See, if, the, if someone could come in and say something different than what you said, then you know he got some ways to go. <laughs> That's a good thing. Amen? Either way, it's good. It's good to know, and it's also good to learn. Because we're all, all students. Amen? Amen? Amen. So it's important not to do it together. Let's do it relational. Let's bring another brother or sister with us all the time. And let's love the laws, and uh, let's go out and study about a lot of people and baptize. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.